All right, thank you so much indeed uh, for staying with us. Uh, we're moving on to our first interview for the day. Uh, the, uh, the topic uh, is on credible elections, particularly credible local government elections, and the call by a rights group uh, that sanctions uh, should be dished out to states who default or who are not able to conduct credible local government elections. We've been joined this morning to look at this topic and, of course, other developing stories around local government uh, elections across Nigeria. Mr. Jide Ojo, who is a public affairs analyst. Mr. Jide Ojo, good morning and thank you uh, once again for being our guest. All right, um, I believe you can hear me. Uh, so, yes, I can hear you. Oh, absolutely. Thank you so much indeed for joining us. All right, so uh, let's look at um, uh, what's, what's your first reaction to this call that the federal government should withhold allocations to state governments, also to local governments, who, whose elections or whose um, uh, whatever processes that brought them into power are not credible. What's your first reaction to that kind of uh, call? Thank you. Um, the Constitution is very clear in Section 7, uh, 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, in Chapter 7, in chapter seven says, the uh, system of local government shall not be uh, uh, governed undemocratically. That's paraphrasing the words of the Constitution. That means um, if you are not if you are not a product of election, you are not supposed to administer the governance system at the local government. And the constitution also went ahead to uh, highlight all the all the functions of local government, funding of local government, all of that are in the constitution. But over the past 25 years, this has been observed in breach, where we now have governors rather than conducting elections, decides to appoint sole administrators or, at best, critical committees. So you have almost 27 states that didn't even bother to conduct elections. Um, in fact, the protective story was that of Anambra and Bonu, that in the last 25 years, I'm not sure either of the two states have conducted local government elections more than once or twice. And that is not what the framers of our law envisage. They want credible elected chairmen and councillors at our third tier of government. However, when you look at the Supreme Court decision that came um, about June this year, it now strengthened that position of section, section 7 and said that, look, um, one, Caretaker committees and sole administrators are unknown to our jurisprudence. Is they, they, they are both unknown to our laws, and that local governments that are not under democratic governance, uh, you know, are in breach of the constitution. So the Supreme Court also went ahead to say that funding of local government shall be directly to them rather than through the joint state's local government accounts, which is specified in Section 162 of the Constitution. And that's one of the uh, legacy achievements of Tinubu administration. That um, we have former President Buhari failed because he also attempted to strengthen and give financial autonomy to local government when the F uh, financial regulation uh, uh, agency or something in 2018 or thereabouts came up with a regulation that funding of local government should be directly uh, disbursed to the 768 local government and six area councils. But the governor's forum went to court and challenged the powers of the president to, to make that happen. So the Supreme Court ruled the president out of order. But now it's the same Supreme Court that has now said that funding of local government shall be directly to them, uh, which, which further elucidates the provision of Section 162 of the Constitution. Now, what we have seen since that Supreme Court decision has been a raft of local government elections. Uh, in the last 
one month, over 15 states have conducted local government elections. In, in fact, just last Saturday, we have Benway, Akwaibon, and Rivers yeah. uh, conducting their local government elections. But Akin, the question is, what is the integrity quotient of those elections? Mm. How credible are those elections? Mm. Because what we have seen is that the ruling party within the states ends up winning all the seats, all the councillorship, all the chairmanship. All right. What has happened over this weekend, let me just land on this thought. What has happened over this weekend was uh, in Rivers, they considered one local government to action alliance. Uh, APP won all the remaining 22 local government. And in Akwaibon, they decided to give the president of the Senate his own it's local, local government. government. So APC won in one out of 31 local government. The remaining 30 was won by uh, PDP. And in Benue, it is Carigo. All the local government chairperson and councillors were won by APC, which brings to question the integrity and credibility of those elections that are conducted by state independent electoral commissions. Look at it a little bit clo close, closely. I mean, APP is not a ruling party in River State. APP is an opposition party in River State. So uh, maybe, maybe we can all, we can we can say that it's an exemption to uh, the the norms. Uh, except except there is something that we are not seeing yet. But then APP and, and the maybe, APP. Maybe you should I respond? No, no. Maybe it's it's, respond it's not for you to respond. It's not for you to respond. That's why I said. There's something that we don't know yet that we are all perceiving. Uh, it's a perception. Are you sure you don't know or you don't want to admit that you know? It's a perception. It's a perception. However, Jide, let's, let's stay with the call by, by Serap. Yeah, Serap made that call. Um, many would argue that it, it does sound very undemocratic asking the federal government to withhold uh, allocations to local government, which is not a... A, 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 what's the word now? Government is not doing the, the local government a favor. It's a statutory obligation of the federal government to fund or to send the allocations to local, to local government. Now, when Serap is saying withhold this, many would say it is dictatorial, it's undemocratic, and should be frowned at. However, many would also want to question who determines what a credible election is because um, I, I don't know if in the history of Nigeria, aside the 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 2000 and um, the, the um, Abiola election, I don't know if we've had any credible election in Nigeria across all strata of, of of government. Well, again, um, if you if you ask me as an election expert, there are indices and indicators to credible elections. And they are universal uh, everywhere. That's why uh, when we as accredited observers go to the field to uh, observe election, we are benchmarking those elections against the uh, standard operating procedures as set out by the State Independent Electoral Commission or as set out by the Independent National Electoral Commission. And there are very many indicators uh, that you look at, uh, uh, checklists that you look at to know that an election is uh, credible or not. Uh, let me run you through some of them. For instance, uh, there are usually guidelines uh, to elections. Are uh, those guidelines followed to the letter? Uh, for instance, uh, you have issues of uh, not uh, the, the result not following the laid down procedures in terms of uh, collation. Uh, the the what is put on the form ECAT is at variance with what uh, is declared, or there is issue of overvoting, or there is violence, or there is uh, monetization of the process. Uh, these are these are things that you flag when you say these elections are credible. You cannot say an election is violent reading and then is credible at the same time. So the credibility of elections or free and fair elections have a global standard for benchmarking them. However, I, I come to the other angle of your question, which is whether it is right for Serap to, to, to dictate that um, any, any state that does not conduct local government elections 
should have its funding uh, withheld. That would be against the against the Supreme Court decision that was made to, to, to 2002, uh, when um, former President Olusha Gwambasanjo decided to withhold the funding of uh, local government in Lagos State on the ground that. Uh, the LCDs, uh, local council development uh, authorities that were established, were not uh, established in, in line with um, uh, constitutional provision. And then uh, the, the Supreme Court ruled that uh, Obasanjo administration was wrong to have withheld the funding of local government and asked that it should, it should be released to them. And since that time, uh, it has been the business of governors to determine uh, whether to create LCD or not. But the issue in question is, yes, um, subjectivity of credible election. Like I said, there are standards, global standards, even regional standards and national standards to determining uh, credibility of an election. However, when election is conducted at variance with the provisions of the law, it is the judiciary that should do substantial justice. But unfortunately, we have a judiciary relying heavily on technicalities. The last time I appeared on this your program a couple of weeks ago, we were discussing Edo elections, and I came out with um, what section 135 sub 1 of the electoral seats, which talks about uh, substantial non-compliance, that it's only on the basis of substantial non-compliance that an election can be voided. So it is what the judiciary thinks it is. So if I'm going to answer the, uh, uh, the, the question about the integrity or validity or credibility of any election, if the judiciary says this election to their own mind is credible, then we take it as credible. But for us as election experts, as cephalogists, I know that you know when election does not follow lay down guidelines and procedures, it is in breach of the law and cannot be said to be uh, credible. So going back to the issue of CERAP, CERAP is overreaching itself by saying that uh, funding of local government that have not conducted elections should be withheld. It is uh, for the Supreme Court to now determine that, look, uh, because I've been hearing different versions of this story, that the Supreme Court said the election should be conducted within three months of that decision. I don't even think that's the position of the law. I think they, they just said, the Supreme Court just said, funding of local government should be disbursed to them rather than through the joint state's local government account, and did not prescribe the timeline for conduct of local government election. However, it may well be that the president, in meeting with the uh, governor's forum on, you know, during the National Economic Council meeting, uh, may have persuaded them giving them a timeline within which they should conduct local government elections. Maybe that's what they are now following through. Because I've also had people say, particularly in river states, that, oh, uh, if, if we don't conduct this election before, uh, is it November 15 or uh, October 15, then we will be, uh, we will be uh, out of order or stuff like that. But I don't think that was, that was the order of the Supreme Court. But by and large, it is just so that we are in full compliance with the constitutional provision if elections are held. As I speak with you, um, Kano and Oshu has planned their own election for, uh, I think, January or February 2025. And everyone's will not fall. So um, I, I think it's just in order. But what, what I'm bothered about is just that the winner takes all uh, system that we are starting to see in the name of conducting elections. Uh, even Anambra that did, uh, even the, uh, the, the Anambra that conducted its own local government elections also recently, uh, and Lance, you know, even the people, the clerics in, in Anambra states were disappointed about the quality of the election that were conducted uh, under Professor Chukuma Soludo. But by and large, I think um, it's better to have those elections uh, for whatever it may worth, and uh, than to have sole administrators or theatrical committees that are not elected. Because whether you emerge through a flawed election or not, the bottom line is that people are more interested in the funding that comes to you 
how do you manage those funds? And it now shows very clearly that if you mismanage the funds uh, because you were a boy boy or a study or a, 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 a minion to a governor, if it's just you, 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 you were elected, quote and unquote, on the basis of gratifications as, uh, from the governor, and you decide not to be accountable with the funds that have been disbursed to you, you may actually have your days with EFCC and ICPC. Because what it means now is that there will be higher demand for accountability by the people at the community level, at the grassroots level, to say, OK, we know, uh, forget about how you imagine whether the election was credible or not. We want you to account for the monies that has been disbursed to your council since you assume office. And that's why when you fail to deliver, when you fail to uh, be accountable, uh, people can write petition to EFCC, ICPC, and other anti-corruption agencies to force you to account. Uh, so you may end up having more council chairmen and councillors being dragged before the anti-corruption agencies uh, if they fail to do the needful in terms of accountability and transparency in the management of funds to local government. So that's that's the beauty of all of this. Uh, forget about whether the election was valid or invalid, credible or, or false. The accountability of governance and that important to the people at the state at the local government level. Time is of the essence. Um, this call by Serap, uh, can we say some kind of subtle advocacy for a review of the existing legislation? I think there is no two way about it. That with that Supreme Court decision, there will still be a need to amend our constitution. Like I said, the joint state local government accounts, Jack, they call it Jack, is a provision of the constitution. It's, it's in section 162, sub three or sub six, but I know definitely it's in section 162. If you have a copy of the constitution, you can check it out. Section, subsection three or subsection six is what created the joint state local government account. So now that the Supreme Court has said that this funding for local government should be disbursed to them directly, uh, not minding the provision of that section, subsection that says that there should be joint state local government accounts, then we need to amend the constitution to now reflect that, that the funding for local government will be disbursed to them directly. And if I can stretch the uh, argument a bit further, the scenario that is painting now, let me also link this to why elections in, in the, uh, to the local government may be like carry go election, where the ruling party in the state may win all of the seats. The point is this, many states have gone ahead to create what is called local council development authorities. Now, these LCDs are unknown to the constitution, even though the Supreme Court said they are not illegal, but they are inchoate. They are inquiry to the extent that they have not been listed in the constitution because all the seven and six eight local government and six area councils that are currently operational in Nigeria are listed in the constitution. So that they are inquiry means that they just have only passed the first test, which is being created by the state uh, as the houses of assembly. But that for them to be fully recognized, they have to get consequential listing by the national assembly. Now, these LCDs, the problem with funding them going forward with this Supreme Court decision would be, now, when these local governments that are constitutionally recognized get that disbursement, when, when they get their monthly allocation, how will the LCDs that are created but does not have financial uh, uh, support from the federal government, how will they be funded? It then means that the governors will still railroad or and twist the existing local government chairpersons that are governing the uh, constitutional created ones to, to, to part with part of their funds so that they can use it to now fund the LCDs. Because I don't see any of the state governors uh, liquidating or, yeah. or, or, or cancelling or abrogating the existence of all, all these LCDs. So that's why they want their allies to be in the local council so mm. that when they order, you know, these are not going to be written or that it may be a phone call 
that certain percentage of your funds should be remitted to a dedicated account so that they can be used to now fund the LCDs. Yeah. But this is not known to law, yeah. and they will still have to account fully for the funds that have been disbursed to them. You know, you know, this definitely will be an ongoing conversation. I mean, it is, it is. We've, we've not been able to exhaust it. Uh, even the concern around the Supreme Court for local government autonomy is still struggling to find, um, find. I mean, find, find. Uh, you know, its, its position uh, in, in governance. Uh, Jide Ojo, thank you so very much for your time with us on this conversation. It's always a pleasure having you come talk to us uh, on News Up thank today. You. Thank you very much. Thank you. Keep safe. Happy, happy New Week. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah. Same to you there. Chido Joe is a political affairs analyst, a public commentator, always on point every time we have him on the show. We'll go on a break right about now. We'll come back. We'll go to River State and look at um, the River's elections, uh, local government elections, and all the matters that have arisen uh, given to that election. Stay with us. <laughs>